me. And I'm going to go ahead and review the housekeeping. This is hypochlorous acid, non-toxic disinfection to safeguard your dental practice against superbug contamination. Long title. And we're going to see here in just a second what that all means. I want to give a shout out to the support of our sponsors, Everclean, EarthSafe, and Medical Partners International. Our copyright disclosure is there. And this presentation was sponsored this evening by those sponsors. I have not received a speaker's honorarium. I declare no financial affiliation with today's sponsors. I am the CEO here at Dental CE Academy. There has been no corporate influence that has contributed to the content of my program this evening. And any mention of products during this course is for general information only. And there is a way to reach out to me for any questions that you may have. The agenda five to six Pacific time will be my continuing education presentation for one CE credit. Following this presentation, I will actually be talking to you about hypochlorous acid disinfectants and electrostatic sprayers um, offered by our sponsor. That portion is not required for CE credit. And at 6.35 p.m. Pacific time, there is an email that is auto-generated. It will be sent to all attendees to complete a quiz for CE credit. If you log out at 6 o'clock when we let you know and you don't want to watch the product demonstration, that's fine. You will be redirected to a screen actually to complete the quiz. The same for all of you that stay on for a few minutes. So again, please be sure to watch for that reminder email. CE credit instructions again will be sent to at 6.35. You'll also be redirected to complete the quiz. You'll need a minimum passing score of 80%. You have unlimited attempts and you have seven days to successfully complete. Your CE credit verification is then sent to you from Dental CE Academy. There is the email. Be sure you double check that your email is correct when you enter it. We get probably 15% where the emails aren't correct and they come back to us. I think it's because we're on phones and we're all thumbs. Double check, you'll save yourself a lot of time. Be sure to check your spam and promotions folder and feel free to reach out to us for assistance. I also want to clarify for you in the last couple of days, we've received a lot of requests for auditing your courses for you. We don't provide that. We're not required to provide that. So please be sure that you keep track of the courses you take, whether it's with us or any other provider. And if you need a copy of any of your CE certificates, that is the link right there. Just reach out to us and we're happy to send you a copy. Okay, chain of infection, we're going to start with here, direct and indirect contact. Uh, any questions about the instructions? And again, if you joined us a little late, there are the instructions in the chat area. And you can tap at the top of the screen to download the handout or check your email from earlier today. So it's important to acknowledge the chain of infection because the chain of infection is why we're here this evening, first of all. And this is how disease is transmitted. Um, this is how a pathogen can go from being on your countertop, for instance, to putting someone in the hospital. So let's go through this chain of infection. And our ultimate goal here is that we want to disrupt these links. So if you just took the infection control on Saturday, this is gonna be a 10 second review. But all of the links here are important. And again, if we can disrupt at least one or more of these links, we can prevent infection transmission from occurring. So we need a pathogen, right? We need bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites. We need a reservoir that can be humans, animals, soil, food, and water where that pathogen lives and multiplies. We need a portal of exit. That is a way for the pathogen to escape its host. So either through coughing, sneezing, bodily secretions, bleeding, uh, saliva, or feces. Mode of transmission. We need a way for that pathogen, once it escapes its host, to find and re-enter a new host or enter a new host. Mode of transmission. Notice what we see there, the hands. The hands are the number one mode of transmission. 
gloves don't save us. We still have to wash our hands. And we have to wash them effectively before we put our gloves on and after we take our gloves off. In hospital settings and in some medical clinics, this is a, a major um, goal to implement for them because when infection occurs, they know that it's often connected to ineffective hand washing or no hand washing. And the hospital is penalized financially through insurers or patients that are having extended stays in the hospital because they've developed some antimicrobial resistant infection or, or possibly death and liability. So hospitals place great emphasis usually on the hands as well as medical, uh, some of the medical settings, not all of them, unfortunately. So gloves don't save us. Direct contact is when we come into, of course, direct contact with a patient. Uh, indirect contact would be through surfaces such as our floor, our countertops, or fomites, which are inanimate objects. So that could be um, contaminated instruments and so forth. And then vectors. So vectors are insects, rodents, and so forth that may be harboring this particular pathogen. And then we need a portal of entry, right? So we need a way for that path pathogen to re-enter a new host. And that can be through the mouth, nose, eyes, mucosa, cuts in the skin. And then finally, we need a susceptible host. We need someone who is not immune to the particular infection caused by this pathogen. And it could be anyone. If you don't have antibodies to protect you to uh, mount a war against this particular infection, if you have an immune system in, that's intact, sometimes you can't, right? But if you are in a high-risk population, such as older adults or infants or those that are immunocompromised, their ability to mount this war dwindles and they are much more susceptible to developing infections. Okay, so ultimately we want to again disrupt one or more of these links. Are there any questions about the chain of infection? Okay, so elements of effective surface uh, disinfection we're going to review very quickly here. It includes effective hand hygiene, uh, reduce the aerosol and improve the indoor air quality. We do that through adequate HVAC, external section, um, intraoral section, filtration, UVC germicidal lighting perhaps. We use disinfectants that are correct for the purpose that are safe, they persist, and they're effective against superbug contamination, which we'll talk about today. And we're gonna focus on hypochlorous acid and its many benefits. We use disinfectants that are safe for our team and we follow manufacturer's instructions. We provide training and then evaluation. Why is effective surface uh, disinfection important? Well. Contamination of the various surfaces in our dental practice are a reservoir for microbial dissemination, meaning adding to the chain of infection. Okay, so these surfaces serve as a reservoir. We just spoke about reservoirs for microbial dissemination to dental personnel, patients, instruments, devices, equipment, and other environmental surfaces. There are many pathogens that colonize the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the respiratory tract. They have the potential to be disseminated both directly and indirectly throughout our operatory. And really it doesn't stay there, right? Because we have to be concerned about aerosol and they're not limited to, but here are a few, SARS-CoV-2 as we know, Mpox, herpes viruses, HIV, hepatitis B and C, Clostridium difficile, methicillin resistant staph aureus, multiple species of staphylococci, streptococci, and what we call MDROs, multi-drug resistant organisms. 
and then other oral respiratory viruses and bacteria. And they don't have to be just respiratory. They can be fecal to oral route, as we'll see. The longer these organisms are permitted to remain on the surfaces in your dental practice, the higher the chance of additional contamination and or disease transmission. Prevention of transmission and of infections from contaminated surfaces is best accomplished by reduction of any source of contamination. And the sooner we eliminate it, the better. Now, I want to talk briefly about healthcare associated infections. Healthcare associated infections, it's important to reduce the degree of contamination on the environmental surfaces in dental treatment areas because it lessens the probability of cross-contamination and disease transmission. And when you think about dental practices and healthcare-associated infections, we are at much greater risk because our day is procedural. We set up trays, uh, we perform almost many surgeries and sometimes not so many surgeries. So there are many opportunities for cross-infection or cross-contamination to occur contamination in the patient environment by bacteria, viral, and as we know, fungi have frequently been associated with healthcare associated infections that occur in a wide range of healthcare settings. We're going to see that in just a minute. So it's imperative that we improve the environmental surface cleaning and disinfection to prevent this transmission and reduce these types of infections. In outpatient settings, which dental practices are part of the outpatient setting, um, it's very difficult to track infections that may occur in the practice because once the patient leaves our practice, of course, they can come into contamination with um, various pathogens, you know, when they walk out the door. But we can at the very least, the very least, help to contain and reduce whatever might be in our practice so that our patients aren't at greater risk by walking in the doors of our practice. And we saw a couple of months ago a situation with waterline uh, infections that had occurred because of pediatric practices, I believe in Southern California, were not mitigating for biofilm. And they had pediatric patients that were developing um, mycobacterium and non-tuberculosis mycobacterium infections because the water lines were contaminated. So they were able to link that back because they had multiple children that were developing this particular infection. Antimicrobial resistance I'm going to talk to you briefly about because it's one of the largest threats to global public health and many of the resistant microorganisms cause infections that result in significant morbidity and mortality on a global scale. One of the most significant contributing factors is the spread of resistant infections, including Clostridium difficile, MRSA, as well as other drug resistant organisms and non-compliance with recommended infection control practices. So if you let your guard down, or you have management tell you that we can really skip this step and you know that that step is important in disrupting the chain of infection, um, I want you to think about this lecture, okay? Because non-compliance is what puts us all at risk. And it's not just us, and it's not just our patients. As we'll see, it can actually also be our family members at home. Any questions or comments? Okay, for those of you who may have logged in a little late, please be sure to tap on the link in the orange box in the chat area and download the handout. Okay, the CDC estimates that more than 2 million in the United States become ill every year with antibiotic resistant infections. 23,000 Americans die each year from these infections. I happen to be one of those in the statistic that was not the 23,000. However, I did have 
an antibiotic resistant uh, Clostridium difficile infection last year that followed a dental procedure. Now, antibiotic resistant infections are caused by many different organisms as we'll see Clostridium difficile Candida auris, which has been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, fluconazole resistant Candida, which is uh, part of that. Candida auris now is developing <clears throat> resistance to all three of the major antifungals. Vancomycin resistant Enterococcus, uh, multi-drug resistant Pseudomonas origin originosa, uh, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. All of these are in your dental practice now and then, and maybe more so than others. But we don't see them, and we don't see our patients get sick after they leave, right? Because we don't have a tracking mechanism. If they got sick and it's two weeks later or so forth with Clostridium difficile, it can be up to three months after exposure and after they finished antibiotics, how would we know? We don't have a tracking mechanism. There's no surveillance really for outpatient settings. Okay, we just answered this early as your surface disinfectant sporicidal. And for those of you that joined us a little late, the answer here in most dental practice is that it is not. Now, if you're relying on your tuberculocidal claim, that is not a sporicidal claim that we're talking about here. The tuberculocidal claim came about around the beginning of the HIV AIDS epidemic when we did not really know the causative effect, causative factor for HIV. And I know this because I trained during that time in dental school and um, I was a dental assistant prior to being a dentist. So I don't even recall really disinfecting our surfaces um, in the dental practices that I worked in in 1981 because we didn't. We might use gauze and alcohol and that was about it. So when the concern about the AIDS epidemic occurred, the tuberculocidal claim came out because it was the best thing we had at the time. It's a gauge. It isn't saying that we're killing tuberculosis spores on countertops because tuberculosis doesn't infect us from a countertop, it's respiratory. It's a gauge used in a laboratory, all right? Now, we're gonna be talking about hypochlorous acid today, which is still going to kill tuberculosis, um, mycobacterium tuberculosis, but it's also going to actually kill spores that we need to be concerned about. Quaternary ammonium compounds, which is what the majority of you are using, known as QAC or QUATS. This is a document that was published on May the 5th, just a couple of weeks ago. Quantity ammonium compounds, a chemical class of emerging concern, despite widespread use in environmental releases of QACs to the environment, most have not undergone the rigorous regulatory assessment for potential adverse human and ecologic health effects. In fact, the most basic parameters needed to assess their potential for harm, such as quantitative data on uses and volumes, physical chemical properties, exposure and toxicity are lacking for the majority of these compounds. And this document went on further to state, the concerns include the following effects. Dermal, respiratory, immune, reproduction, developmental, metabolic, and environmental impact. And this was from Environmental Science and Technology as of, I believe, May the 5th, again, just a couple of weeks ago. So these are the wipes that the majority of dental practices are using. Community-associated C. difficile infections. I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to just briefly touch again on my experience. Last year, I had a, a dental procedure, and I developed C. difficile within 48 hours after being in that practice for a 30-day follow-up appointment. So I had been prescribed antibiotics for five days one day prior, excuse me, six days, one day prior to the procedure and six days afterwards, was back for a 30-day follow-up, 
and within 48 hours developed a life-threatening infection. I was ill for nearly six months and almost died. So I want to show you this video from Contagion Live because many of us, I can't say many of us, but a lot of us, we're trained to believe that C. difficile is almost an opportunistic infection, right? That the, these spores are lurking in the colon of the patient. They're given an antibiotic. We upset the microflora balance, and it provides a niche for these C. difficile spores to proliferate and, and produce toxins and make us sick. That only represents 0.4 to 15% of the general population. And that 15% is often older adults that are in a hospital or nursing home, or someone like me that's had C. difficile before, because I will always be, um, there'll always be a concern that I'd be a carrier. It's this study that should open your eyes uh, and many studies like this study indicated that 80% of those infected with community associated C. difficile infections, so these are infections outside of a hospital, they include dental practices, had some exposure to a healthcare outpatient setting, dental offices, physician's offices, dialysis centers, ambulatory care centers, and the spores we know are everywhere in the natural environment. They're nearly impossible to kill. The difference here is that these spores exist at much greater levels in medical settings. As you'll hear, six experts weigh in. They call out dental practices too. And these spores can put you at risk, your patients at risk, and your family members at risk. So I'm going to go ahead and show this quick video for you. Some of you may not be able to hear this on your device. The link is in your handout. You can pull it up on YouTube. So again, this is Contagion and this is their peer exchange. They're talking about managing community onset C. difficile. These are six experts, infectious diseases experts. Dr. Paul Fjordstad in the upper right is probably the most uh, famous preeminent C. difficile physician and researcher in the world. And they're talking about patients and how do they get it outside of a hospital setting. We're going to see 80% of those cases occur outside of a hospital setting. And they're going to tell you how this occurs. And I'll meet you back here. So let's talk about community C. diff if we could for a moment. Uh, uh, what are the risk factors in, in the community and how do they differ in the community versus the, the hospital-based uh, population here? Dale, you wanna start us on that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good uh, question because um, there's two factors that we need to have in order to get C. diff. One is antibiotic use and the other is uh, exposure to the spores. So the spores are ubiquitous. They're out in the environment they even contaminate at a very low level some foods, meats, uh, root vegetables, lettuce, and those are probably how patients in the community get exposed. They, um, on the other hand, uh, when the CDC has looked at community-associated C. diff, they found that about 80% of these patients have had an exposure to healthcare as an outpatient. So it's doctor's office, dental office, and uh, you know, chronic dialysis units, uh, ambulatory surgery. And this is where you have two risks. One is that somebody's going to give you an antibiotic and that those are called doctors. And they put people at risk of C. diff. And, uh, and the other exposure is that the healthcare environment is more contaminated with C. diff spores than is the environment outside of healthcare. And I, I think it's worth noting, Paul, Paul is nodding his head, he has a lot of nodding. Uh, it's not just the people who are in the healthcare system. It's not just the people who got the antibiotics. They go home. They've got spores. And then their families are exposed. So uh, it seems to me that that's, that's part of the, the issue, isn't it? And those, yes. spores, those spores can live for a significant period of time on many different surfaces, 
even when exposed to sunlight and you know you'll see some data that says alcohol and certain um, certain products can kill the spores but that it really has to be used properly where they where the, the liquid sits on a surface for a significant period of time to have its effects. So the fact that the spores can be taken home with you on your lab coat and, and in your house and on your on surfaces for six months or a year or longer uh, certainly put people at risk. Okay, how many of you were aware that you could actually develop C. difficile from contamination in a dental practice. Go ahead and type yes or no in the chat area. And I know some of you may have taken my class before on C. difficile, but how many were you of you were aware that these spores are transmissible in a dental practice? So not at all. So when I became infected, only after taking my class, I appreciate that. That's my job. Um, I became aware of this, embarrassingly enough, because um, I'm a public health dentist here, and I've practiced in private practice too, but I was the chief for the Office of Oral Health for Maricopa County. And when I became ill, um, I knew factually that I had not been a carrier because I had had a panel done probably about six to 10 months prior to that for an unrelated reason. And my daughter, who is a 30-year-old freshly graduated RN, who had been a CNA, when she heard that I had C. difficile, she said, you know, you're going to have to disinfect your house. And I said, well, I have, you know, the cavity wipes and everything here. And she said, no, those don't kill C. diff. And I said, what? She said, they, they don't kill C. diff. In the hospital, they call those purple tops. She said, we don't even really use those anymore. We use a bleach type product in the hospitals. And I was flabbergasted because I was flabbergasted with the fact that I didn't know this. Now, the other thing is that um, the dental practice where I became infected invited me back with an active infection because they didn't want to give up the cleaning appointment. I had a cleaning appointment Friday. I was discharged from the hospital. And they said, well, we don't have to give you an antibiotics. You can still come in for the cleaning appointment. So that's sort of when the light bulb went off for me. Now, wait a minute. We don't use disinfectants that kill C. difficile spores. We're prescribers of antibiotics. And we're inviting people with active C. diff infection back in. When I was just discharged from an isolated room and everybody had to PPE up before they could come in the room and make sure they washed their hands and everything, I couldn't have visitors. So there was something wrong there. And that's when I started to collaborate with the experts on this because I realized that if 80% of these infections are coming out of uh, community associated or community or were linked to community associated infections, um, we're missing something here. And I think, as you saw, it takes two things for C. difficile infection to occur. One, antibiotics. We disrupt the gut flora, the microbiota. It's there to protect us. And two, we come into contact with the spores. Exposure to the spores. Those are the two things. You can hang on to that belief that there are carriers, and there are. But the majority of these cases, that is what's required. Okay, so that's why we're here this evening to talk about not just C. difficile, but we have other pathogens that we need to be worried about. And are the cavi wipes or the quats, are they a logical disinfectant? And I would argue no. I would argue no. So let's carry on here. In fact, I had to call in a biohazard team to have my map, my entire home and my office 
mitigated for C. difficile spores before I could have the surgical procedure required to save my life so I would not become reinfected. And what did they use? They used hypochlorous acid. Okay, so I told you my story here, and, and this is a very um, horrific looking timeline. When I look back at this a year ago, that's myself on the left. That was before C. diff. I'll never be the same. I will be constantly affected by colitis and post-infectious IBS. My life will never be the same again. Um, that is me in the middle after 30 pound weight loss and a fourth hospital admission. And that is me one day after a fecal microbiota transplant. And I uh, knew I was gonna make it. Okay, and Clostridium difficile here very quickly kills 30,000 a year. It infects 500,000 each year. Nearly half of these cases are antibiotic resistant. So um, metronidazole doesn't touch this anymore. It's pretty well, uh, well, we have better antibiotics, but um, it's used in some areas where there, where cost is a concern. These spores, as you heard, can go home with you. So I don't advise you wearing your shoes home. Um, anyone is susceptible, any age, any antibiotic, even a single dose. This was a quick pilot study where they wanted to determine the efficacy of quaternary ammonium compound wipes compared to hypochlorite products. And they studied active C. difficile patients that had contaminated surface or actually an operatory in an infusion center versus non-C. difficile patients. The non-C. difficile group, they used the quat wipes that you all use, many of you. And then on the C. diff patients, they used the hypochlorite solution. And they found that both populations contaminated the operatories in the infusion center. So even the non-C. diff patients brought in C. diff spores. Uh, the C. diff patients brought in a lot more spores. But they found at the end of the day, after they did their cleaning, the C. diff patients had less C. diff contamination left when they used the hypochlorite products versus the non-C. diff patients that they used the quads. Healthcare workers on antibiotics that work in healthcare settings, you all are at risk for C. difficile infection. Um, and I can't tell you how many dentists that have reached out to me afterwards or hygienists or assistants that said, yeah, I treat patients in a nursing home and my assistant, my 20 year old assistant developed C. difficile. Now, do they have factual knowledge that that person got it in a nursing home? No, but there's a good chance this one um, dental assistant happened to be on antibiotics for sinus infection. If you are on any antibiotics for sinus infection or UTI, be very, very careful at work. Make sure you're washing your hands. Don't wear your shoes to work or in and out of the office. Um, wear shoe covers. This is Dr. Curtis Donsky, who's an infectious disease physician in um, at the Cleveland VA Medical Center. And he said, I think it'd be a good idea for employee health to inform their personnel about the risk if they prescribe antibiotics. He does that routinely when he prescribes antibiotics to folks that are working in healthcare facilities. And he said with no active surveillance system for these occupational infections, which they are, they're almost certainly more occurring than the cases that are sporadically documented in the medical literature. And when he gives presentations and comments on the risk of healthcare personnel taking antibiotics, it's common for a physician or nurse to come up to him afterwards and say that they or one of their coworkers got C. difficile while they were working. So it is an occupational risk. Now you may say, well, we're not taking direct care of uh, C. diff patients, but this was a study where they showed that antibiotics were the strongest risk factor for developing C. difficile infection in health uh, care workers, whether or not there was clinical exposure to patients with this infection because the environment is contaminated with C. difficile spores at a greater level than the non healthcare environment that you heard um, the disease, uh, disease experts weigh in on earlier. 
The importance of effective hand hygiene, I can't stress it enough. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer is not sporicidal. And so this is a serious challenge that we have to see difficile in any sport mitigation in the healthcare setting. The CDC recommends alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizer because it improves compliance. But the question is, is it's being used correctly and you cannot rinse off the spores. You're just moving them around. So there's now a prevailing thought that maybe we should be using soap and water under running uh, tap water because we could at least flush those spores off our hands. Candida auris, of course, is an emerging multi-drug resistant uh, yeast, a type of fungus causing severe uh, infection and death. And it can persist on surfaces in healthcare environments for a very long time. And it's classified as an urgent threat. So is Clostridium difficile. It's one of four antimicrobial resistant urgent threats with the largest mortality rate, 30,000 every year in the US. MRSA, an increasing presence of MRSA in the oral cavity is an immense public health threat that cannot be downplayed given its potential for enhanced MRSA transmission. Environmental surfaces here. We've gotta be worried about the environmental surface. Clinical housekeeping are the two types. Clinical, we have direct contact with the patient or our gloved hand or spray or spatter, housekeeping surfaces, flooring, walls, and so forth. We need to be using an EPA registered disinfectant. So this is our clinical contact surfaces, the unit handles. We should include any of the electronics that are used in the operatory. And this is the examples of clinical contact surfaces in the dental office. And then our housekeeping surfaces, flooring, wall, and so forth. I might add that because of the aerosol, I recommend having as little on your counters in your operatory as possible. Okay, environmental infection control, EPA registered hospital disinfecting products. We're gonna be talking about hypochlorous acid here in just a second, as well as our clinical contact surfaces and if you're using an outside service, find out if they're using an EPA registered disinfectant. And honestly, hopefully after this, they'll be using hypochlorous acid. Find out what mops they're using. Are they using the mops that were used down the hall in endoscopy in your practice? Um, I hope not. Or are they using Mr. Clean on your floors? They again need to be using an EPA registered disinfectant solution. What to look for in a dental practice environment or for dental practice disinfectant, excuse me, EPA registered, EPA approved label showing the EPA registration number, the safety and technical information and what their efficacy claims are. We'll see that not every hypochlorous acid is alike. Okay, so the history of hypochlorous acid was discovered in 1834. Um, this is a French chemist and he added a dilute mix of mercury oxide in water to produce a chlorine gas and later discovered that this hypochlorous acid was a safe and effective disinfectant. 19th century scientist, Michael Faraday was the first scientist to develop an electrochemical activation that produced hypochlorous acid from salt water. It's a powerful oxidant. It's the most powerful oxidant in the chlorine family, more so than bleach, more so than sodium hypochlorite. It is a weak, slightly acidic. It should be around neutral pH. For some of you that may be producing these with um, a countertop generator, yours may be more on the acidic side. This Hypochlorous acid naturally occurs in the white blood cells. It is soluble in water, it's non-toxic, and it is a neutral charge. It attracts bacteria. Your current wipes, again, are quats. They're not sporicidal. Hypochlorous acid is optimal. It's an optimal disinfectant for dental practices, for your operatories, for your laboratory, for your restroom, for your business office, your private office, your staff areas your receptionary, all, all surfaces. This particular system that I'm going to be talking about. If you leave here and you go to eBay and buy any hypochlorous acid, as you'll see, 
that may not be the case. It may not even be sporicidal. It may not be the right concentration. It might be a pH that's going to kill your surfaces. So I'm going to be talking to you about a system that is for dental practices, medical practices. It's not going to corrode your equipment. It's safe on granite. It's safe on upholstery. It's safe on carpeting, um, on your units, on your electronics. It's also used in other various forms for wound care, acne, oral rinses, and veterinary care. I have spray for my one little dog who tends to get yeast infection and uh, hot spots. And when she gets one now, I can treat it and it will be gone within 24 hours. It doesn't sting. Now, the most cost-effective disinfectant on the market today is hypochlorous acid. It will replace really every disinfectant you currently use, your wipes, your tablets solution, um, and we're going to talk about uh, the sprayer as well. The mechanism of action is that it kills, its back, kills bacteria by penetrating the cell wall. It inhibits DNA synthesis, protein synthesis, growth, and ATP production. It can penetrate bacteria and virus and fungi. It's naturally present in all mammals. It defends us against all manner of pathogens and potential pathogens that attack the body from both outside and within. And again, used in wound care, also food safety. So grocery stores. Grocery stores use the countertop generators um, for your fruits and vegetables, for instance. Um, so how are they produced? And how are they made available to healthcare? Ready to use products. So you can um, see that they are ready to use products are offered. They produce these by adjusting the pH of bleach, sodium hypochlorite solution at the manufacturing plant. And that solution is typically basic or alkaline. On the pH scale, it's brought down to more of a neutral pH by adding a pH adjuster, all right? not recommended for your dental practice. On-site generation systems, electricity is run through salt and water. And to do the salt, or sometimes called a precursor, is added to the water prior to the electricity being applied. And then what we're going to talk about following this is NADCC tablets. These tablets are products that are capable of making the hypochlorous acid solution um, right at the dental practice. So you can make it as you need it. It is a neutral pH and you can control the concentration that you need. Okay, it's colorless. It's a water soluble tablet. Note, not all of the above products are registered with the EPA. The NADCC tablets I'm going to be talking about are EPA registered list K, which is sporicidal, for Clostridium difficile, and then everything else you are currently concerned about, including MPOX and, um, of course, SARS-CoV-2. Generator systems may not be EPA registered, and they may not produce at the concentrations and the pH required for your practice. It can actually harm the surfaces. What do you need to know before you purchase hypochlorous acid? Is it EPA registered? Again, does it disinfect versus sanitize? There, um, in the system I'm going to talk about with you, there are two types of tablets that you can use. The one is a cleaner disinfectant, so it has a little surfactant in it. You'd use that with a dry wipe. Um, and the other that you use an electrostatic sprayer is um, a disinfectant. The contact time with any product shorter is usually better, but for Clostridium difficile, because they're spore forming in the aerobic form. So Clostridium difficile is anaerobic and your quats will say that it kills C. difficile, but it does not kill C. difficile in its spore form, only in its vegetative form, which is anaerobic and it's gonna die anyways on your countertop, okay? The spores, as you heard, can live for months to years. And the contact time is important. For the system I'm going to be talking about, the parts per million concentration is 4,306 parts per million. 
and the contact time is four minutes through an electrostatic sprayer or through um, just a regular sprayer or wipes. Again, it's important that that time is four minutes, no less. Does it contain a surfactant? Many products do not contain a surfactant. We're gonna talk about one this evening that does, that can be used on your floors. Um, you can use, uh, the wipes are shipped to you dry, so you're not paying for liquid to be shipped. You add the tablets and tap water, away you go. And you can use it anywhere that you believe there's visible soil. And then you're gonna come in with a sprayer and just spray the operatory down. You can turn over the operatory in four minutes. Not all hypochlorous based solutions have been EPA approved to be used through electrostatic sprayers. I'm gonna be talking to you about sprayers tonight. The last thing you wanna do is get off of here, buy a sprayer and go buy a ready to use liquid to run through it because it's not approved. And if somebody gets ill from your practice and your only defense is well, I bought this jug of hypochlorous acid and they're gonna to look to see, is this EPA registered? You aren't going to have a defense. So, and you don't wanna put your practice um, at risk. So again, my goal here is to show you a system that is EPA approved. So much of this here is review for you. And here is the link with, uh, to the EPA list K and we have it again in the back. You can go to this. You can look at the label. This is actually the pure tabs, the NADCC, but look at the label in the back of any of your disinfectants and put it in to their track tracking, if you will. And they're going to tell you if it's on their list and what the kill claim is for. What's it supposed to kill? If there's no EPA registration number on there, don't use it. You might see an EPA establishment number some of these companies will use this and it's misleading. The EPA registration or EPA establishment number is where it was produced, where in the world. Um, and it may not be EPA registered. So always double check that. Disinfectant wipes transfer Clostridium difficile spores from contaminated surfaces to uncontaminated surfaces during the disinfection process. Um, they determined here that regardless of the product type, um, some wipes had the sporicidal effect, the wipes that they looked at here, but they transferred the spores from contaminated to otherwise previously uncontaminated surfaces. And when they looked at the quaternary ammonium compounds, it caused more cross-contamination of C. difficile spores. Electrostatic sprayer technology. So I'm gonna show you two quick videos here. The first video is um, someone using hypochlorous acid in their dental practice. They're not using the spray gun. I'm gonna show you the electrostatic sprayer next, um, but it shows you how to apply it to your surfaces in your operatory. I wanna mention one thing here. You see the tub of quat wipes on the counter? You don't wanna mix this. You cannot mix quats with hypochlorous acid. So if you're gonna do one, you've gotta stick with one um, and get rid of the quats. But um, let me finish the video.
Okay, so that was a really good demonstration of someone applying the hypochlorous acid. she treated the electronics, the unit, and so forth. I'm gonna to talk to you in more detail about the electrostatic sprayer. He's actually gonna use an electrostatic sprayer. An electrostatic sprayer electri electrostatically charges the molecules of hypochlorous acid as it leaves the nozzle. And by doing that, it charges these particles so it becomes attracted to the surface, number one, and it creates a wraparound effect. So they've done a comparison of using wipes in an operatory versus using an electrostatic sprayer or just um, a regular sprayer with an electrostatic sprayer. The fact is you're able to reach about 70% more surface with an electrostatic sprayer because it's gonna wrap around to the back of your chair, your unit and so forth, areas that you can't even reach. He is not wearing PPE. You should be wearing PPE. It's still non-toxic, but we wear PPE in our dental practices. So you hold this about one to two feet away from the surface. Um, it's not heavy. You put four tablets into the container with tap water. You'll see the plastic container. That plastic container, when filled, is going to provide you with about 2,800 square feet of surface coverage. So if your operatory is 20 by 20, 400 square feet, you'll get about six to seven uses um, from one tank, all right? or five and you can also treat your receptionary during lunch. Notice he just disinfected the blood pressure uh, device, the electronics and so forth. He's gonna go over to the curtain and treat the curtain and then the chair. And he treats this entire operatory, this is an infusion center, in one minute and 59 seconds. So the electrostatic spraying technology reaches up to three times more surfaces in the same amount of time it would take you to use the wipe. I can't think of anything less um, effective than handing your assistant or your hygienist a tub of wipes and say, go ahead and disinfect this operatory for superbug contamination. It's not gonna happen. So again, more information on electrostatic sprayers. Now, you may have foggers in your practice, or you may have used those early on in the pandemic, and those are great, but they're, um, they don't usually provide the electrostatic charge. So you actually wanna apply this to your equipment, your chair, your countertops, et cetera. At the end of the day, you're gonna do a full terminal clean floor, whatever you can reach on the wall, et cetera, when you walk out of the room. Now, the hypochlorous acid wipes are available and, and I recommend them because you should use those on areas that are visibly soiled, right? And they have a surfactant in them. So you might wanna use it on the chair and the countertop and then you just come through with the sprayer. This is the Victory Innovations electrostatic sprayer and I'm gonna be talking about it afterwards, but consider this a public service announcement. I do not get any remuneration for this at all. This sprayer is the exact same sprayer the gentleman was using in the operatory that you just saw. The difference here is about $600. Victory Innovations, when they make that Protexas sprayer, and when the pandemic first occurred, they received government funding and they overproduced these. They're now selling them off on um, Amazon. The $59.95 as of today, I double checked. There is a link and you will never see this price again. So I've, I actually bought six of these because I did spend $600 on that Protexas sprayer times two, and then Victory Innovations um, is now 
selling these off on uh, Amazon because they have a surplus. Pandemic is apparently over. Right. So you have an opportunity to get this and you'll never get it again. And these are cordless. They're chargeable. They come with a bag. They come with an adjuster so you can adjust the nozzle for your units, your carpeting, your upholstery and so forth. Um, I'm not endorsing the product. I'm just letting you know that you have an opportunity to purchase this at a price that you'll never have again. And we have some dental practices. I've showed this and bought one for every operatory, which is a good idea because you won't have to worry about sharing it. Here's your list K here. It also includes sodium hypochlorite bleach solution. In hospitals, they'll use hypochlorous acid or bleach. It depends on what surfaces, but you never want to combine both. The advantage here again is that this is non-toxic. The odor here is a light, it smells clean. Um, it's not irritating, it's safe on your surfaces and it's at the end of the day, less expensive than the wipes that you're using. You can turn over an operatory in four minutes and you're gonna kill everything. There's resources for you on our website, more classes. Here's the C. difficile toolkit that we're offering up to 10 CE credits, it's on demand. And you'll learn about antibiotic prescribing. Dr. Palmeyer is the co-author of the ADA's Antibiotic Prophylactic Guidelines for Odontogenic Therapeutic a Joint Replacement on um, an Infective Endocarditis. Three and a half CE units now on demand. If you take any courses this year, if you're still prescribing clindamycin, Take this course, please. November is C. difficile awareness month. It gets its an entire month. Antimicrobial resistance gets a week. That should tell you something we think here at Dental C Academy, it should be every month. Um, thanks for listening today. I'm a C. difficile survivor. I've hoped I've shared some information for you that you can take back to your practice. And after this, I am going to uh, provide you with some information on hypochlorous acid if you care to stay for a few more minutes. If not, you can log out and get your quiz. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk next about the NADCC tablets and the sprayer. So if you want to stay on for about five minutes, I will do that very quickly and point you in the right direction. This again um, was sponsored by EvaClean and EarthSafe products. They are makers of hypochlorous acid. And there is a link in the other handout for you they're offering a disinfection starter kit, but you can also purchase singularly. And it includes also waterline tablets. So hypochlorous acid comes in the waterline tablets. They have the dry whites, so you're not paying for liquid. Um, the pure one tabs and the pure tabs. Pure tabs are used in the sprayer and the pure one are used with the dry wipes. And um, free shipping anywhere in the US and they've put a package together for $2.99. But again, you can go to their website and I'll be sharing that after this presentation. Okay, so this portion is not required for CE, but I will get through it in five minutes if you want to know where to get these products. Um, this is, these are some of the challenges that I brought up. The EPA uh, list K is important because it kills C. diff spores and all the other dangerous pathogens that we need to worry about, unlike those quats that we're using. Safer than your current wipes and disinfectants. Replace all of your current disinfectants at 30 to 50% savings at least. Um, operatories are turned over in four minutes. You can clean water lines, surface friendly, seamless integration. There's really nothing to training your team except 
you put four tablets in a tank of water, charge it at night and point it towards the surface about two feet away and make sure that you let it come into contact with the surface for uh, four minutes. Again, you typically get up to 30% of the surface coverage with your wipes and the traditional cleaning methods. Here, you can reach dental units, sink faucet handles, door handles, keyboards, office phone, and all of your dental equipment. So you start with step one, which is cleaning, disinfecting, and that's where the wipes come in and they're shipped dry. So they're not, you're not paying for liquid and they're giving you free shipping here. So that's a plus. Clean and disinfect, you use the pure, pure One tablets and um, it's Pure Tab here, the Pure Ones, excuse me, is the first product with a registered kill claim against bacteria that present biofilm on your surfaces. Step two, then you come in with your electrostatic sprayer. This takes less time than pulling out a bucket of wipes and trying to wipe the little nooks and crannies on your unit and the surface and so forth. And it's much more effective. Okay, so the touchless electrostatic disinfection of all rooms and walls, you use that Victory Innovation sprayer that's $59. This sprayer that is here is $500 and Victory Innovations makes a sprayer, okay? For tablets in the tank here is a concentration of 4,306 parts per million. It'll kill C. diff spores in four minutes. It'll kill COVID-19 in one minute or SARS-CoV-2. Um, it'll kill SARS-CoV-2 at 1076 part, parts per million in four minutes. So the Pure Tabs and Pure One tablets, again, the Pure Tabs that I have here are you use these in the electrostatic sprayer and the Pure One you use with your wipes. They are constant, concentrated effervescent, effervescent tablets. Um, so you get an accurate dilution every time, which you may not get with your tabletop generators. So again, it's very foolproof. Neutral pH, so not caustic or corrosive to surfaces. The HMAS and NFPA rating 000, meaning it's non-toxic. And an EPA emerging pathogen claim for SARS-CoV-2, poliovirus, MPOX, C. diff, and many others. So the chemistry here outperforms all others. And you'll note down here the biofilm kill claim for the Pure One tablets that you use with the wipes. The only one. This is the sprayer video that I will um, show you here in just a second. What happens if quats and hypochlorous acid are mixed? You end up making sort of a bleach smell that's pretty strong. So you want to, um, some practices that are interested in this, they're using up their quats now. Some had the quats shipped back, but you don't ever want to mix them, okay? So once the tabs are mixed with water, how long is the solution effective? So um, the solution effect is effective, I believe, for one week. And I'm going to show you, he's going to demonstrate it very quickly for you. But again, the tank here is good for 2,800 square feet. So the chance here is that chances are you're going to use that if you're going to use it from the tank for about four or five operatories, maybe your front desk, and, and then you're going to mix again. All right. That's why some of the practices are buying one for each operatory because now they, they're not going to be sharing and they're going to be able to get through, you know, a good part of the day. But you're going to want to also treat your laboratory. Your restroom is really important um, if you have staff lounge and that sort of thing. Your, your business lounge. In the C. diff course that I teach, they studied various outpatient settings. And one of the outpatient or one of the rooms in these outpatient settings that was frequently contaminated was the doctor's office. And this isn't fear mongering, but it makes sense because you're walking into treatment areas, you're walking back into your business office, right? So we have to concentrate on those areas because you don't wanna take this stuff home with you. 
All right, let me pull up this link here very quickly and I'll show you the very quick demonstration. So this is um, how the kit will come to you is in a bag. You're not going to get it in the, the plastic case, but it's in a, in a nice, almost looks like a tool bag with everything you need. Again, it's $59.95. Um, Chris with EarthSafe is going to demonstrate it here and show you how easy it is to use it. I wanted to be the first to congratulate you on the purchase of your brand new Protexas PX200 electrostatic sprayer. This is how it was delivered to you, and I'm going to open it up with you right now and show you what's inside. And I want to point out that this sprayer was made by Victory Innovation. So that green sprayer is this sprayer. And this sprayer goes between four and $600, depending on the distributor. So right now it's $59.95. So, just a nice little flip of the latch and here it is. You're gonna have your charger, four and a half hour runtime lithium ion battery, the tool for the nozzle, charging cord, and your sprayer and lid for your tank. Now what I want to do is show you how to remove the tank. The first step is to rotate the dial of the tank lock to the unlock position. Grasp the tank with one hand, pull the tank release ring with one finger, and the tank comes right out. Set it down, and now we'll fill it up. I'm just going to use this beaker here, fill it up 32 ounces. Put your cap on it so it doesn't spill. Now your tank is filled, you're going to grab your pure tab, Right here, this is our 3.3 gram tablet. We're gonna drop this in here like this. Seal it back up. And then you just wanna allow anywhere from three to five minutes to have that tab dissolve properly. So now we have our tank and our pure tab is dissolved and we're gonna insert this back into the sprayer. Take the lid off. We're gonna put the tube in the top of the tank. Line up the sprayer with the grooves of the tank. Make sure the lock is in the unlock position. Click it on there. Turn the wheel, lock it, and you're good to go. Our PureTabs disinfecting and sanitizing tablets are the ideal portable solution for use with the Protexus electrostatic spraying systems. PureTabs can be used as a replacement for bleach in any disinfecting and sanitizing program. Simply select from one of three available tablet sizes, refer to the dilution chart to find the proper concentration, and mix with normal tap water to produce solutions with up to 10 different uses. From killing C. diff in healthcare facilities to preventing contamination in food processing facilities as an NSF, Registered Food Contact Surface Safe Sanitizer, PureTabs are an effective and economical solution for all your hard surface disinfecting and sanitizing needs. So now our sprayer is ready to use. We want to make sure that the electrostatic is turned to the on position and we are good to go. Let's talk about optimal distance and optimal electrostatic performance. You want to make sure your hand is firmly wrapped around the handle here, the ground strap. That's going to allow for the maximum wraparound effect. And you want to stand back two to three feet is the distance where you're going to achieve that most effective wraparound. And then pull the trigger and spray. So what he's showing you here is that the first with just the regular spray bottle does not reach around to the back. He has litmus paper on the back here. And when he used the electrostatic sprayer, it wraps around to the back because it's charged. So you're able to, again, reach areas behind uh, that you normally couldn't reach 
in your practice. Why is that important? Because we have aerosol and we have microcurrents that occur in our operatories. And these uh, pathogens that may be on the back of your unit that haven't seen a cavi wipe in years can be re-aerosolized, right? So that's important. That's an important feature of electrostatic spray. There's also a link at the top of the screen that will take you right to um, the distributor and you can bookmark that if you need to take anything back to your practices tomorrow. Now I want to talk about changing your nozzles. Your sprayer comes with a tri-nozzle system for whether sanitizing, disinfecting, or sanitizing carpets. Insert your nozzle wrench, turn it clockwise, you'll hear it click, click, and click for each nozzle. Let's talk about care and instructions right now, something that's very important to me. Never store your sprayer with water in it. You wanna make sure if there's any solution left in it, you can take the tank out, remove the tank, take your tank cap, and set that aside. And then what you wanna make sure is you evacuate the sprayer to where everything comes up the tube and it goes out the system, all the fluid on the inside until the nozzles spray air. What also is very important is to regularly flush the system so it's not gonna be stored with water. Your brand new Protexus PX200 electrostatic sprayer is ready to use. Pull the trigger and spray. From all of us at EarthSafe, thank you so much for watching this presentation. Okay, so basically that's it. Um, if you're trying to integrate something in your practice that's new, it doesn't get any easier than this really. Um, I use this in my vehicle. I use it in my home. I use it in um, our offices here. And I was using prior to that a Clorox bleach wipes, the healthcare quality bleach, not, not the Clorox wipes that you get in um, your grocery store or whatever. These are actual bleach solution, right? Um, until five months ago when my husband became infected with C. difficile. All right. This tells you how contagious this is. Now, did he get it from me and in the home environment? We'll never know. He wasn't even on antibiotics, right? Um, and he has a risk factor, his age. So we switched to this system because this was the system that was used by the company that came in and did the biohazard um, cleanup here. Okay, so the benefits here, they ship tablets, not water. So it shaves you, saves you money and, and they're gonna ship the kit to you for no shipping charge less handling, minimalizes, minimalizes, minimizes the environmental impact. So this is a solution that's earth friendly too. You're gonna use less of the wipes, which is better and less of the microfiber wipes, which are horrible for the environment. And it also saves you space because you're not storing all of these liquids in tubs. You can make what you need, right? Dental water lines can also be treated with the aqua tabs, which they're offering in that kit, or you can purchase it as well. This is the special promotion for attendees, and this is in your handout as well. So that is the link. And again, you can order these individually. In this case, they're including the dry wipes, the pure one and the pure tabs. This again is the Victory Sprayer. And I have to tell you that a month ago they were $29.95, but when I checked the price last week and today, they're now $59.95. So follow the link that we gave you earlier in the handout and we'll take you to the most current price. I would not follow uh, that link. Um, this is Medical Partners information there. You can check them out as well. And we do have, again, the link for you to order here. And there is a couple of questions here. 
So question from, I believe it's Duke. I hope I'm correct here. Can we use on computer monitors to or digital scanner? Yes. Double check with your manufacturer, but this is a very fine mist when you have it set at the right particle size. So that's the beauty about it. You can use it on electronics. It has to be held about a foot to two feet away. It doesn't need to be soaking wet surface. If it's soaking wet, you're putting too much on, right? Um, if I use these products, can I get rid of all the quat products in the office? Absolutely, that's the idea. You don't need the quats ever again. And as you saw, the quats are not particularly healthy for you and the environment. And they're not doing the job. Any other questions or comments? So I'm going to put the link up for you to the current sprayer for $59.95 because I didn't update that for you in this presentation. And because it's no longer available at the $29.95 price, which was amazing to me. And you'll see if you do a quick price check on the ProTexas, it is four to six hundred dollars. Any other questions? And I have the link there, the Amazon link for you. So I see quite a few of you went to the banner. <clears throat> you can reach out to me later through the website and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, my goal here is to make sure that I educate as many practices as I can about hypochlorous acid and the fact that our quats are a big fail to me. Um, they're not good for the environment. They're not efficacious. Um, we're not able to cover all the surfaces that we need or eliminate, um, the dirt or so forth. You know, if you see, if you have, for instance, hoses that are laying on the ground because the lines are too long, have them trimmed off so that you can clean those because wherever there's dirt, you're providing organic material for these pathogens. That's what they, that's what they thrive on. So have the, the um, hoses trimmed if you can. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you need that length right to reach the patient. But those things go a long way. Make sure that you are treating your water lines, um, whether it's with AquaPure or whatever you're using, make sure that you're doing that on a regular basis as well. Any other questions or comments? I'll tell you in closing, Dr. Paul Meyer, if you watch his presentation on antibiotics, he has got rid of all of his quats too. He said his practice has been quat free. And what does he talk about? Hypochlorous acid, folks. He's in complete agreement with me that we have to get rid of the quats and go to something that's safer that is going to address the C. diff spores. All right, everyone. Well, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, let me know if you have any questions. We're going to go ahead and close out. You're going to be redirected to a screen to take the quiz. You'll also be sent the quiz by email. If you did not download the handout yet, I'm going to repost it here for you in the chat area. Be sure that you do that because you'll need that to take the quiz. And if you'd like to bookmark the EvaClean website, Medical Partners, if you tap on the banner at the top of the screen, you can bookmark that, save it, and show it to your practice tomorrow. This presentation has been recorded. We'll let you know when the recording's available later this evening, and you can share that with them as well. I thank you all for being here. Be sure to take uh, a gander at the schedule that we have. We have some courses this week on aerosol mitigation and so forth. And have a wonderful week. Thanks so much.